Ibrahim from a young age he was threatened threatened by whom his own family his own people they threatened to burn him they threatened to throw him into the fire they threatened to kick him out of the community guess what they executed these threats one by one you and i are threatened sometimes people don't execute it and if they do it's not as bad as we're going to burn you in the fire <laughs> subhanallah what did he say? I trust Allah, my maker, I trust him. The greater the trust, the greater the challenge and the bigger the miracle the day that happens. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. This yaqeen and conviction of Ibrahim alayhi salam is what is being celebrated over and above his dedication to Allah alone. He worshipped Allah alone. Inna Ibrahim kana ummah. Allah describes him as a whole ummah, as a nation. Because even though people didn't accept his message at the time, few, very few. He had his nephew, Lut, Prophet Lut alayhi salam, his wives, or his wife at one stage before he had the other one. And subhanallah, that was all. And he was a prophet of Allah. Imagine two people, a few people, a handful of people, maximum. But here is Ibrahim alayhi salam, he knows. Allah instructed me, leave your family here and you proceed to Baytul Maqdis or to this direction. Immediately he left it and he went. Allah says, we need you to sacrifice your son. Whatever the reason was, some of them we know, some we may never know. He said, if it is coming from Allah, that's it. His son was so well trained that he says, oh my father, if this is from Allah, that's it. It's going to happen. I will surrender to it, make dua that Allah makes me from among those who are patient. Who is saying that? The son. Imagine the type of conviction. If Allah has instructed you, that's Allah. Today, in sustenance, people want to engage in haram things, thinking that if they don't, they will lose out, not realizing the conviction should be such that your sustenance is not going to be decreased because you stayed away from haram. In fact, if anything, it's going to increase. Allah owns it. Ibrahim alayhi salam, put his life on the line according to what we would look at it from. But in essence, he knew whatever Allah has written is going to happen. And so he did it. His own son sacrifice for what? Because it was the instruction of Allah. Similarly, in your lives and mine, if you want to be celebrated in the true sense, even after you've died, surrender to the rule of Allah. Pray, dedicate yourself to Allah, worship Allah alone. Remember Allah, don't do that which is displeasing to Allah. And because you're a human, if it does happen, turn to Allah again. Repent to Allah. Allah will grant you, Allah will give you. So Ibrahim alayhi salam, when Allah instructed him things that were impossible for you and I, he did those things. He became closer and closer and closer to Allah. Allah says, Inna hadha lahu al -ul -mubin. Allah says, this is clear cut test from Allah. Clear cut test from Allah. For who? A major test. Ibrahim alayhi salam. That is the Hajj. Allah loved it so much. Nothing stopped him from worshipping Allah. No amount of threat, no amount of harassment, no amount of execution of threats stopped him. They said, we'll kick you out. He said, do what you have to. I have Allah with me. Who do you have with you? Subhanallah. May Allah Almighty protect us. Seize the opportunity of your life before a day comes when you won't have it anymore. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma used to say, when you enter the evening, don't ever think that you're going to get up in the morning. And when you get up in the morning, don't ever think that you're going to make it to the evening. Meaning you should just be prepared. You should just be prepared. Many times, I think when you clock a certain age, as you recline in your bed, do you know what's the dua? The dua is... Oh Allah, in your name, I put my side to sleep. If you take my soul away in my sleep, have mercy on it. And if you send it back in the morning and allow me to wake up, protect me in the same way you protect your pious slaves. Wow. 
بسمك اللهم وضعت جنبي وبك أرفعها إن أمسكت نفسي فاغفر لها وإن أرسلتها فاحفظها بحفظك الذي تحفظ به عبادك الصالحين That's a prayer the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to make when he used to recline in the evening go to sleep, go to bed What does that mean? It means you might not make it up in the morning Have you made peace with Allah? Make peace with Allah every morning, every evening And I tell you what I started off by speaking about New Year's resolutions and i'm ending off by telling you you should have a daily resolution in fact twice a day in the morning and in the evening because as the angels rotate your deeds go up let's make sure that they go up at least with the repentance oh allah my day i did good i did a bit of bad forgive me grant me goodness let tomorrow be a better day i'm going to use my energies in the right way make me a better person such when i close my eyes and meet you grant me the goodness and make it easy for me in this world as well. Bearing in mind when you make the lives of others easy, Allah makes your life easy. My brothers and sisters, there is something known as a sa'i, the running or the walking between two mountains in Mecca, Safa and Marwa. If you look at the reasoning behind it, it was searching for sustenance, looking for something to eat or drink. Subhanallah. Today, we have to go there and engage in that act of worship, seven rounds, following the sunnah of a female, Hajar alayha salatu wassalam, who actually sacrificed to search for food, to search for sustenance. Allah is showing you mankind, when you are on earth, you will have to make a sacrifice to earn. When you try, even when you're losing hope completely, we will allow that sustenance to gush forth in a way you never imagined. Lay your trust on us and don't displease us. We are the owners of sustenance in the barren land of Mecca, where it was impossible to find water. Here is a woman desperate. She had hope in the mercy of Allah and nothing else. Her husband left her. She was alone. Her husband left her in order to engage in the obedience of Allah, to follow the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you know what? When it comes to us, not only do we abandon our family members, sometimes we're doing it in order to disobey Allah. A man, lazy, lazy as he could be. And he's supposed to be a breadwinner. He's supposed to be earning. Come on, don't we learn a good example from this female? Work hard. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us sustenance. A day will come when against all odds, sustenance will gush forth when you've made Allah your aim and you won't believe what has just happened. But when you make the sustenance your aim, it's not coming. Why? Ta'isa abdu dirhami wa ta'isa abdu dinari. You know, at loss is the one who worships the dirham and the dinar, the one who has no principle. When it comes to being pricked by a thorn, he won't be able to help himself. Why? Because the remover of that pain is Allah, not your money. Subhanallah, not your wealth. May Allah grant shifa to all those who are sick and ill, wealthy or not. So this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's Allah who is reminding us to say, my beloved worshippers, I'm the owner of everything. I'm a total owner. If you want something, the one way of getting it, develop a relationship with me. That's it. The problem is we are searching for the solutions of our issues with those who don't have the solutions. They are in a problem similar to ours. They are weaker than us. They could die before us. And we were looking to them and at them to solve our problems. Next thing, the man is gone. The woman is gone. What does it show you? It shows you that the owner of your solutions, Allah, you want to solve your problems. There is only one way, no two ways. Develop your relationship with Allah. You have no other option. No matter who you are, what power you have, how wealthy you are, how good looking you are, no matter how people cheer you on, a day will come when you have to leave everything and go back to Allah. What did you do for that day? That was the struggle of Ibrahim alayhi salam. That's why we have the sacrifice today. 
he was prepared to do for Allah without understanding what Allah was instructing him. Are you prepared? Are you prepared to do for Allah? What you understand is a requirement. If you were and if you did have the knowledge, you know, when we eat halal, if you want to study why we do that, you will find the solutions. You will find the reasons. If you want to know the benefit of getting up early, sleeping early, you will find it. The non-Muslims are discovering the reasons regarding why the Islamic rulings are in place. This is the gift of Allah. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.